thank you for watching today's episode of the Food of London. Remember to subscribe and like our videos on YouTube and to like and share our videos on Instagram and Facebook. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the Food of London. Now it's a little bit different this week mainly because Pete and I are not in the same house at the moment. And that's because I am currently having to self-isolate in the suburbs and Pete is at our home in London. So we thought about not doing an episode of the Food of London this week, but then we realised that wouldn't be fair on you guys. So rather than leaving you without your weekly dose of London food and facts, we have done this week's episode by utilising the power of camera phones and WhatsApp. This week, we're going to be looking at a dish that some people start the day with. It's a dish that's full of different elements, different flavours, and full of calories. It's known as the traditional English breakfast. We hope you enjoy, and we hope you're all keeping well out there, and we'll see you again next week. Today, many people feel that breakfast is the most important of our three meals a day. However, until the middle of the 1600s, people would actually only have two meals a day. This meant that they would skip breakfast and head straight for lunch in the late morning, then would have to wait until the early evening until they could tuck in to some well-earned supper. Even then, supper tended to be quite light. Breakfast was not actually recognised, and eating in the early morning would tend to only be recommended to kids, invalids and the elderly. And even for them, breakfast was supposed to be more of a snack than anything substantial. As the years went by and people started to eat their lunch later, people naturally got hungrier in the morning and needed something to fuel them until the afternoon. Some other countries tended to serve larger portions for supper, so breakfast stayed fairly minimal. Think of some of the typical offerings at a continental breakfast buffet. Fruit, pastry, coffee, perhaps some cereal. Things were different in England though, and by the 1700s, families would usually gather around the table at about 9am to enjoy some ale, bread and cooked meat. It wasn't until the 1800s that the wealthy members of Victorian society decided to ramp breakfast up a gear. And that was when what had been a light bite became a full-blown meal. And what a spread it was too. Grand mansions across the country started to serve buffet style a veritable carnival of grub. A cookbook at the time outlined the following components to create a suitable breakfast. These consisted of broiled fish such as herrings or dried haddock, mutton chops, rump steaks, broiled sheep's kidneys, sausages, plain rashers of bacon, bacon and poached eggs, ham and poached eggs, omelettes, plain boiled eggs, poached eggs on toast, muffins, toast, marmalade, butter and so on and so on. Not only was this new breakfast a success in the UK, it also started to be made and served in far-flung places such as Australia, South Africa and India. And this was because of the growing British Empire. It seems that the Britons didn't really want to take on their new, exciting local cuisines, but would rather serve up a little taste of home. Nowadays, the traditional English breakfast has changed a bit. We've lost the steaks, kidneys and broiled fish that gained mushrooms, beans and tomatoes. Also, as most of the ingredients are cooked by pan frying, its name can vary too. Some call it a traditional English breakfast, others a simple fry-up. Today, Pete is going to make his favourite fry-up. And this is a fry-up that has proved again and again to be popular with international visitors. For example, when his sister Rochelle visits from America, this is the first thing she wants to eat when she lands. So today we'll be attempting the fry up. So what we got here, we got um, some beans, these are Heinz, but other brands are available, but we know that we kids. But nice slice of bread there, a couple of nice eggs, 
beautiful portobello mushroom there, clove of garlic, nice tomato, three slices of thick cut dry cured bacon, mmm, and we've got some nice black pudding and two nice sausages. So uh, first of all, we're going to put the oven on gas mark four. And the reason for that is just so we can put things um, in the oven as we go along, uh, because obviously you want to serve it all at once if you possibly can. Pop the sausages in. We'll add the old black pudding. There we go. Black puddings are eat black today, mother. Oh, even the white bits are quite dark. And next, the bacon. Now this is why I like grew up here bacon. So you don't get any of that watery nonsense. Beautiful, dry, good. So you don't inject it with water, the weight in other words. And it's not too simple either. It's just nice. So, we'll cook up the bacon. Then the bacon, of course. Mm, looking all lovely into that, like a little bit of it goes into the oven. So, we're just going to pop a little bit of butter in there. A little bit of garlic. The garlic is good for every human person. Yeah, it's beautiful, look at that, beautiful. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I didn't have any dinner last night. Mm. <laughs> and then a cheeky tomato. Looking lovely. So as soon as these are cooked, they're going into the oven with the rest of it. And now the fried slice. Go with Danny, I'm busy, mate. And now the fried slice is going in the oven. Get in the oven, you mug! And now the eggs. And meanwhile, a little bit of beans in the corner of the pan. Mm, lovely. So we're looking to get a plate. There we are, all lovely and out of the oven. It's a renegade sausage. Now, not my fried slice in half, so I'll just do that. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Egg, bacon, sausage, black pudding, mushroom, beans, tomato, and fried slice. A bon appetit. Thank you for watching today's episode of The Food of London. Remember to subscribe and like our videos on YouTube and to like and share our videos on Instagram and Facebook.